He's the king, he might say the queen of flim flam, a bow-tied, besequent gadfly of gossip. David Hartnell has made his living for the past 21 years writing Hollywood trivia, flotsam and jetsam facts about the stars. His latest book, David Hartnell's Celebrity Fact File, is due to hit the bookshops this week. It's all enabled the lonely boy from Mount Albert to live his fantasy life of being confidant to the rich and famous. But beneath the tinsel and smooth-talking glibness lies an altogether different man. It's Friday night and Hollywood has come to New Plymouth. Oh, sure. What's your name? David Hartnell may live in Auckland, but to New Zealand, he's Mr. Hollywood. Well, they were, they were, they were thrilled to see him. Well, I am too. Good on you. Tonight, the star watcher has become the star, the celebrity guest at the local premiere of 42nd Street. Amazing job. How the hell you do it, I don't know. 21 years of gossiping about the stars has rubbed off. Nice to meet you. Hartnell is now famous for being famous. So thank you very much for inviting me. Wonderful. Okay. You'll have to excuse the expression. I'm sure it had to beat this, but I mean, I've been called a star and I want to get close to these stars because it's going to rub off on me and I'm a wannabe and all this. Absolutely right. Because this is my business, to get next to the stars, to talk to them, to have my picture taken with them. <laughs> there you go. And when it comes to business, show business, David Hartnell leaves no detail yeah. overlooked. You've got to look good. This is show business. With Hollywood there. diva Joan Collins coming to town, even Sally the Blue Terrier gets a makeover. Up we go. Here we go. An exclusive interview has been negotiated and the Hartnell Hollywood machine goes into overdrive. Hey, but this feels a little bit like going to visit the Queen. <laughs> Just a bit, isn't it? Well, she is the Queen super bitch of television through her role as Dynasty as Alexis Carrington Colby. But of course, she in real life is nothing like the, actress, uh, like the, the role that she portrayed. How does she like to be treated? Well, everybody must call her Miss Collins. So she's a bit of a Hollywood diva then? Isn't oh, yes, and she knows exactly what she wants. It's clear that dealing with Hollywood royalty is no trifling matter. Yes. Yes. By now, the tension is rising, along with the room temperature. Oh, no, we want as much cold air pumped into the room as possible. Very quickly. But time has run out. The formidable Miss Collins has arrived. How are you? Fine. Good. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Thanks. Stella. Hello. 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 Hi. Good to see you. How are you? I'm Janet Wilson. Hi, Janet. Nice to meet you. Good. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. All right. Well, we'll go over to our interview hall. Thank you. 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 Thank you peer around are you no, 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 because no, no, i was no, right no. when i'm telling an anecdote i have to totally concentrate and if somebody moves i i look over with the interview back on track style once more triumphs over substance can you cast your mind back the first time you ever saw yourself on the screen what your thoughts were oh i thought mm, it was in uh, lady godiva rides again i thought i looked fat and i had <laughs> chunky legs and, and and dirty thin hair and eyes like a, a, a rat. I hated the way I looked. Yeah, Everybody mm. does. Joan Collins, welcome back to New Zealand. Don't leave it too long. It's been nearly 20 years since you've been here. 18, yeah. 18 I know, years. I know. You won't leave it another 18. No, Good. certainly not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. And with that, it's all over. Another bemused <laughs> celebrity, <laughs> another trophy for the Hartnell photo collection. I mean, I have very little talent. I'm the first person to say that, but I've packaged it well, and I've sold it, and I don't owe anything to anybody for doing it. So in that way, I'm very proud of what I've done. But in another way, you've got to be up front. Why do you think you have to be up front, though, David? Why is that so? You've got to survive. You've got to survive. Your childhood, how would you have described it? Pretty much a loner. I had very few friends at school. Um, well, in generality, really. He was a very quiet, shy little boy. To his mother, Gina Ward, David didn't seem to be going places. For starters, he didn't even like going to school. Well, he would cry. 
he didn't want to go, you know, he would cry. And as I say, he'd, he'd be home, but we didn't live far from school, unfortunately. We lived too close. And, and by the time I got home, he was sitting on the back doorstep waiting for me. It must have been. And I'd take him back again. And I left the day I turned 15, and my education started from that day on. I, I'm convinced. Oh, I got a brand new pair of David Ward, as he was then called, had found his feet, and they were firmly encased in a pair of roller skates. He became a champion and represented his country. That was the, the first thing of showbiz, and it was me, and whatever I did relied on me. And I've always been like that in life. I'm a one-man band, and I never want to get any bigger. But a brighter, if not bigger, future was beckoning offshore. Nobody was more surprised than I was. I went to Australia, and I was engaged to be married to this girl, and she said, you don't make up with the skating, why don't you go for this? This was a position as a makeup artist with Revlon. He failed the initial exam, but fast talking secured the job. He was a natural. Now, this back in the 60s was unheard of. A male makeup artist it was, it, it, today it's nothing, but it was very unique. And from Australia, they sent me to Hong Kong and I did promotion, so I had a whole little sort of show busy world that I lived in. This whole new world required a whole new image. He needed a new handle. It was the name. It didn't have a ring. It didn't have a show business. It didn't look good in lights. And I remember, it was in Australia, sitting up in bed with a pad, writing down all these fabulous names like David LaRue and all these sort of fabulous names. Then I came across Hartnell and I thought, oh, that has a bit of a ring to it. The salon chit-chat of his show business clients gave Hartnell entree to their inner world. People like comedian Phyllis Diller, a makeup appointment with Hartnell led to a 30-year friendship. I'm gone. <laughs> I met David Hartnell in um, Sydney, Australia, on my very first trip there. David had an assignment to make me look like a, a fine Australian lady instead of a wild American show person. <laughs> and he did just that. Like much of Hollywood, it's friendship with a dash of business. As he once helped her, so she now helps him with hot gossip. <laughs> well, I, I have helped him with some of that because I do try to keep in touch with him on that basis. And uh, he does have a straight line to me. Goodness knows that I'm, I'm living amongst them. They, they're in my home constantly at parties and... And uh, I, I, have, I have inside dope before it happens. And Stallone. Well, Mother's had another say, has she? Mm-hmm. Well, she never could keep her mouth shut that one, could she? In she fact, Phyllis like Diller says Hartnell is so good at the Hollywood play. shuffle, he's even got the locals confused. At one time, I was in the Bahamas wanting desperately to speak with David. And I kept calling long distance. And the operator in New Zealand kept telling me that David Hartnell lives in Hollywood. <laughs> well, good morning, and as you know, I'm not one to gossip, never let it be said, but hey... These days, the Hartnell gossip vine is humming. His reports are syndicated in nearly a dozen newspapers, two magazines, and on ten radio stations around the country. on this one is quite shocking, because Oprah said, no way, Jose. Do you ever step back from what you're doing and sometimes think, this is so shallow? Sometimes I read these things, I, I, I think, I can't believe this. I mean, I mean, the gossip's as shallow as a splash of water in a, a saucer really, but that's what gossip is. It's a flash in the pan. Do you find that frustrating though? No, it's, it's done me very nicely, thank you very much. They can flash in the pan for as long as they like. But Hartnell's flash was panned from an unlikely source. New Zealand Television's first gay program, Express Report, was to be his public coming out. Remember the pool fight between Joan Collins and Linda Evans and Dynasty? Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Older friends who are gay, but are still so-called in the closet, as they say, said, it'll ruin your career. You mustn't do this. It'll ruin your career. Of course, you'll have to come out. And I said, have to come out? I was never in to come out. But just 13 weeks out. later, Hartnell I quit. I won't be here next week. Till next time, my lips are sealed. His conservative views against gay marriage and gays rearing children didn't sit well with the show's producers. I'm a gay person speaking about how I figure it. And because I do, I get my hand slapped. That's really the top and the bottom. They say, no, 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 you're not PC enough. Well, what is PC enough? You know, I haven't got time to be PC. I want to take the dog for a walk and 
you know, watch Coronation Street and all that sort of thing. But mainstream TV has no such qualms. The Hartnell juggernaut rolls on regardless. He's back on the box on TV One's Good Morning program as the camp hammy Hartnell we all know and love. Uh, he is our link to Tinseltown. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Mayor. The only woman in the world that can call me Dave and get away. Well, you are the only man who comes on in shiny shirts trying to upstage me. Not at all. How much of the David Hartnell that we see on TV is the real David Hartnell? No, it's a, it's a game. It's an act. I mean, all this, you know, I'm not one to gossip, but da 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 You go into this mode. I don't go into a shop and say, um, I'd like six pound of butter and, uh, you know, and everything, and how's everything going? And, you know, it's an act. Of course it's an act. Well, this is a bit like a Hollywood wall of fame, really, isn't it? <laughs> Some call it my Hollywood wall of shame. <laughs> After three decades of self-promotion, Hartnell is fiercely protective of his public persona. But love may have changed all that. Two years of domestic bliss with a Thai banker called Eck, and Hartnell's coming out is complete. Yes. Do you come up here a lot? Yes, uh, we talk Sally uh, sometime, uh, walk in here. Oh, do you? You yeah. take Sally walking here? Yes. He's better than I am. <laughs> Hartnell's new in-laws will even meet him for the first time later this year. How do you feel about taking David back to Thailand, back to see your parents? I feel really good and really exciting because this is the first time for David to meet my parents. And I know my parents will like him. You know they will? Yes. David's mum, Gina Ward, has already given Eck the seal of approval. Well, we get on very well. We have lots of laughs and lots of jokes, you know. And of course, the little dog, that's my little granddaughter, the dog. Yeah. His philosophy has opened my eyes to a totally different world. I'm calmer. Uh, things don't mean as much to me as I would claw broken glass to get somebody. I think, no, no, why worry? That will come my way. And do you know what? It does. <laughs> This is a mellowing rather than a metamorphosis. Hartnell, a keen gay bowler, now acknowledges that fame doesn't buy you friends, that where there's glitter there isn't necessarily glamour, that the business of show is just that, a business, and it's those who believe otherwise who are the fools. So all those people that think I'm a wanker can think about it, but they always say, I never read your column, but I just happened to see uh, in the truth and TV guy and I was wrapping up the rubbish or something, get away. I mean, you know, they've probably got it in the rolled up copy of the Times reading it, you know. The, so I, I just say, yeah, that's fine, that's no problem, as I bank another cheque.